Welcome to the Explore Composites Materials Library. This is laminate sample number 31, a vacuum bagged basalt foam epoxy composite panel. Here's a look at the finished panel. It has 15 millimeter, 100 kilo Corsell core with basalt skins, 450 gram and a 200 gram 090 on each face. So what is basalt fiber? Basalt fiber comes from basalt, which is a very common mineral. It's ground up, extruded just like fiberglass. And why is basalt fiber good for composites? It's sort of between carbon and e-glass. It's stiffer than e-glass, good temperature resistance, tough, a little more impact resistant, somewhere in the middle between e-glass and carbon price-wise, and it has that recyclable, environmentally friendly bit. Looking at this chart, comparing density, tensile strength, and tensile modulus of some common reinforcement materials, you can see basalt falls pretty much in between e-glass and standard modulus carbon. And because of its high density, comparing this Kevlar versus basalt 200 gram woven, you can see the basalt is quite a lot thinner just because it takes less basalt to make 200 grams. Comparing some other features, the elongation to failure, fiber diameter, and coefficient of thermal expansion, you can see basalt has got a reasonably low coefficient of thermal expansion and decent elongation, putting it somewhere between e-glass and carbon. This sample, here's the laminate schedule. I'm going to lay it up with ProSet epoxy resin. This is some fast laminating resin, relatively thick. You can see I've got a lot of bubbles in there because it was cold and I mixed it up. And the table it's going out on is pretty warm. And it's got a chem lease release on it. You can see the surface tension breaking it open there so it's not going to form a uniform film. Here's the 200 gram basalt. It's nice fine stuff. Like I showed earlier, compared to the Kevlar, there's not really much there. You look at it and you'd think it was 150 gram carbon, just because it's much denser it, it takes less basalt to make that same weight. I'm doing a lot of rolling here, trying to get the surface nice. Because the air in the epoxy and just doing a wet layup like this, I'll probably have some surface defects. But here goes the second ply. This is a 090, 450 gram basalt stitched by axial. You can see there's some gaps in it. And it comes out pretty rough compared to something that had smaller toes. But I'm going to roll it out really well and then come back and add a good bit of extra extra resin. I'm probably splitting the resin two-thirds on the bottom skin, one-third on the top skin. And here's the core. This is M100 Corsell. It's an SAN foam, 107 kilos per cubic meter. Ideally, this would be bedded down in thickened epoxy, probably, but I want to be able to see stuff, and I'm lazy. So it's going down here just with resin coated on both sides. It's always a good practice to coat your core before pushing it down. You don't want to just put dry core down. It can lead to air bubbles and things, non-bonded areas wetting out the top skin and I'm just going to wet through this material. It wets out really nicely uh, sort of like e-glass doing this really quick because who wants to see the same thing twice you can see when I press down on it resin coming up through the holes in the core which is good. Good sign there's enough resin in there. This is a polyester peel ply which I've not really used much just wanted to check it out it's much finer grain than the nylon and seems reasonable. I'm not sure why you would choose this over nylon, but the price is about the same, but it does leave a finer texture and it seems to peel off a little better. And this is a P90 release film, just fewer holes, smaller holes, and some light breather cloth. I'm going to put that down there and fold it over just to give a little pad on the end. 
and so that breather doesn't get choked off with resin right at the edge of the panel. I'm just putting a little bit of infusion mesh on there and I'll land my vacuum hose right on that bit of mesh and it will bridge over and hopefully keep the breather from getting choked off. So this bag, if you've seen these, you've seen me do it before. Uh, this one I'm being pretty disciplined about the symmetry of the pleats, trying to make sure I don't bridge anywhere. And you're going to already see some resin bleed through there, coming up through the holes, that's good. I pulled this down at about 10 inches of mercury on the vacuum pump. And then once everything was down nicely, after about 10 minutes, I gave it some more vacuum. You can see some of the detail here. It's pretty sloppy around the edges of the panel, because I'm just going to cut it out anyway. There's the mesh going up on top. And so I cured this pretty warm, and I cranked the vacuum up. So you can see I got a lot of extra bleed. That was probably a mistake. Um, generally, 15 inches of mercury or so is about reasonable for a bagged wet layup like this when you're doing it all at once. If you're doing the skin and the core separately, then you can press it a little more. And demolding this panel. This is sort of off a G10 plate that's been release coated on its last leg, so there's a lot of junk stuck to it. Kind of cruddy around the edges. But the surface looks pretty good. A little bit pinholey. And the thickness 16.7 millimeters, 0.65 inches, 378 grams per square foot, and 13 and a quarter ounces. Having a look at it here, came out pretty nice. A little bit pinholey on the surface, but not bad. I think that was a combination of just bleeding off too much resin and not being able to clear air that had got trapped in that first ply. Probably bubbly resin from mixing cold stuff didn't help. This peel ply came off really nicely. Um, you could see air coming up where it came up through the holes in the release film. That's pretty normal. Ideally there'd be a little less, I think a better compacted first skin. But that's sort of the price you pay for doing a one-shot layup like this. The uh, core is really nice, high density, higher density. It sounds nice and tight, sort of as you'd expect between e-glass and carbon in terms of the stiffness and how kind of high modulus it feels. It looks a little funny, the brown color, but I could see it without, without the core showing through. It could be nice looking stuff. It's an interesting material, sort of right there between e-glass and carbon with some of the benefits of each. Definitely worth checking out and learning more about. Have a look at the Explore Composites website for more information about practical composites.